that's gone on for 55 years. They would have, is this a good Jewish character right here? This yeah, I, I am. Yeah. You gotta love Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but in Israel, on the most popular, with Orthodox, I'm the most popular. Yeah. I asked them, it's pretty Yeah, oh, my parents were very smart. Be careful, they're very good sales. Yeah. That's a recently unearthed footage of Donald Trump once again exposing that he is not just a terrible person, but a deeply racist and anti Semitic individual as well. Now, how do we have this footage? It was just released by Alex Holder, who is coming out with a documentary titled Unprecedented. Holder released that clip on Twitter today. And of course, Trump has been making headlines recently for saying all sorts of awful things about Jewish Americans and about how Jewish Americans aren't great because they didn't vote for him or support him in droves. And then he compared them to Jewish people living in Israel. We had talked about that a little earlier. And just to give you a reminder of that, he had said, quote, on Truth Social, by the way, no president has done more for Israel than I have. Somewhat surprisingly, however, our wonderful evangelicals are far more appreciative of this than the people of the Jewish faith, especially those living in the United States. And when we initially covered those comments, by the way, we explained why, why evangelicals are so appreciative of Trump's policies in Israel. And it has nothing to do with being loving and friendly to Jewish people living in Israel. It has everything to do with their crazy lunacy in their belief in their end times you know, theory. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, John. I'm at a place with with Trump, and I I feel almost guilty admitting this, where these stories come out, Mm -hmm. and I think to myself, yeah, this is this is who he is. Yeah, this is who he is. This is who he is. Like, the people who support him don't care. The people who don't actively like it or actively like it. Great point. They care. It makes them smile. (laughs) And then those who don't support him. Just it's not like they're going to see this and support him any less. They just don't support him, and they they know who he is, and they don't yeah. like him, right? So, I'm not saying that you shouldn't come out with these stories. It's just mm-hmm. that I don't really see the utility in these stories anymore. Yeah, I, I I almost totally agree. I would say there might be a little bit of well, specifically, you know, demonstrating that he's fundamentally anti-Semitic. There might be a little bit of utility in making sure that people understand that. I mean, trying to you know convince someone that he's deeply misogynistic, racist, homophobic. I mean, I feel like that's well trod territory. The anti-Semitism, I feel like he's a little bit more careful on. Mm. This is not the first time or the second time or the third time he said something deeply anti-Semitic, but it's a little bit rarer than the other bigotries, I suppose. Also, he has been out of the public eye for the most part for like a year and a half at this point. So maybe reminding people of who he is, there's a limited window where there might be value to that. But I would say for me, if there's any value to be had from this story, it's not specifically about Donald Trump or changing people's opinion of him. It is making sure that people understand that the right, although they love to complain occasionally about anti-Semitism, mainly as a tool to attack like for instance, a Muslim politician or something like that. Um, no, they they love it. They jump in it. They're the the Proud Boys love it. And all the, all their their you know ground warriors love it, and their politicians engage in it. It's not rare. And also, there might be some utility to pointing out that, like, we're supposed to be a little bit careful around this topic. Like, okay, so we know that Donald Trump is racist, but is he also anti-Semitic? Is he? Can we stop pretending right. that bigotries are unique? Right, hundred percent. Can we stop? Like hundred percent. Yeah, racists or misogynists, and they're homophobes and they're Islamophobes because it's the same thing. I'm not saying that all of them will have all of the bigotries to the exact same degree, or that there can't be one person who just deeply hates women, but is like totally cool with Asian people or whatever. But it's the same thing. It's a it's a feeling of elevation of you. You're good. People like you are good. Anyone else who is different is bad, and it makes you afraid, and it makes you. Suspicious and it makes you kind of jealous in some ways. It's this dark mix of emotions that makes you hate people that are different than you. In every way that people are different than you, class differences and religion differences, cultural differences, geographic differences, age differences. There are hateful, fearful people. Yes, if someone is known to be a person who hates women and hates black people throughout their entire lives, they're probably gonna have some issues with Jewish people too. J.M.M. Frazier in our Twitch community brings something up. And 
I actually don't remember this, so maybe you do, John. Uh, so JMM Frazier says, does anyone remember when we found out at the beginning of the Trump political saga that he kept a copy of Mein Kampf in his bedside table? I, if Did, I remember correctly, it wasn't Mein Kampf. It was a collected book of Adolf Hitler's speeches or something like that. Oh, if I remember correctly. I mean, does that's that obviously sense? different. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's better. No, it's, no, I know you're not. And I could that. be wrong. But no, that's the way I remember it. Yeah, that's terrible. But like to your point, J. Yeah, and it was M. particularly Frazier. bad that a lot of the pages were stuck together. Yeah. I, just, I don't know why people forgot about that story. Oh my God. That part's not true, I added that. Yeah, probably. Th thank you for that, John. Uh, probably, exactly, we don't know for sure. He likes the speeches, that's all I'm saying. Oh my God. Continue. Um, but no, this the last part of your comment uh, is is just so on point because it's like, did that also just get swallowed up by like the like tidal wave of Trump hate and BS that we've been dealing with for you know many years now. Yeah, it did. I mean, that's yeah. but that's the yeah. whole strategy with Trump. And I, I remember Steve Bannon even admitted as much. No, you just flood the news cycle with trash, constant trash, and we're constantly chasing story after story of terrible people doing and saying terrible things. Yeah, and it's just frustrating because. The more it's repeated by individuals who have power, the more it signals to others who might be lurking in the shadows with their hatred yep. that, hey, it's okay, come out and just say it. Come out and be awful to your fellow Americans who might have a different heritage or background from you. But at the end of the day, we're all people, we're all in this country together. We all should be fighting for a better country together. But instead, we allow all of these nefarious moneyed interests and Millionaires, billionaires, people like Donald Trump to continue dividing us yep. with their disgusting, hateful rhetoric. It's, it's the whole point.